Hey guys, Doug here, and today we're back with another Tech Tip Tuesday. We've been getting a lot of questions about motor plates and travel limiters, uh, engine travel limiters specifically, and when they need to be used, how they need to be used, how, how many you should put on your combo, and uh, just some other generic questions. So I thought it would be best to just make a video on it. We can show you the function of our new engine travel limiter kit, which we have available for a variety of platforms and how you should install them correctly. So here we have our new adjustable travel limiter kit. It comes nice and packaged with everything you need to install it, including hardware, rod ends, a piece of chromoly tubing. It comes with a swiveling adapter, which makes fabrication super easy. And we have these for small block Chevy, big block Chevy, LS, and Gen 5 LT, and we have small block Ford and Mod Motor and Coyote coming very shortly. So I will put those links in the description below, and uh, let's just jump right in. So the items that you need for this install are all included in this package. We'll go through them real quick. You get the engine side plate. This bolts to the original motor mount bolts, and as you can see, it has a swiveling pattern in here. This is a swiveling adapter. As far as putting this together, we are just going to take this piece, put it on here, and uh, loosely put this. Uh, these bolts on the back side, you can uh, come back and snug them up later. You're going to want to leave it loose because it makes install extremely easy and that's the whole concept of this piece. You also get a right hand and left hand chromoly uh, tube nut which will slide in the chromoly shaft. We give you about 12 inches of chromoly uh, thin wall tubing and that's plenty strong enough and that's plenty enough length to go to about anywhere in an engine bay uh, as you can, as I'll talk about here in a little bit depending on what's in your engine bay headers wise, suspension, and uh, where your engine's sitting, you might move this to uh, a frame rail or a K member or anything else that's structural. So also included are the weld tabs for uh, that portion of things. So you virtually, to install this, only need a, uh, a buzz wheel to knock paint off and then a welder to go ahead and weld these tabs. Everything else will bolt right up and save you a lot of time and effort. The easiest way to describe why uh, engine travel limiters are needed, if you are uh, installing your first motor plate or mid plate, you might, you know, they're very strong this way and they're gonna be very strong as front, from a torque standpoint, but as a front to back standpoint, they're very banjo-y. You know, you're relying on quarter inch metal an eighth inch metal a lot of times in the rear to keep everything planted. So as you're hitting the brakes and acceleration, what happens is the engine is engine and transmission combo starts to banjo back and forth. And that can be bad as far as, you know, the drive shaft going into the back of the transmission that can damage things as well as you don't want a lot of weight moving around when you're going down the track. So our goal with the engine travel limiters is to stabilize all that. And we're doing it by adding an external point to the frame uh, while also allowing for the torque uh, strength as far as that goes from the actual engine plate and mid plate. We basically in no way invented the idea or concept of using a travel limiter, but the old way of doing it, you would always use two rod ends and a piece of shaft. And then, uh, you know, originally what I would do or what I did on my first project was build a plate, fabricate it by hand, bolt it on there. And then you end up basically kind of holding everything up and you end up tacking this side and you come back you weld it all up, then you come back and tack the other side. It's really difficult to do if you're working in the garage by yourself. And uh, that's kind of the reason why we developed this setup. And you know, you have enough play in a spherical rod end to give you a little bit of wiggle room. But we wanted to make sure that on this end, you're not trying to hold up uh, two loose ends when you're trying to A, mock it up and B, fabricate it and weld it and tack it and all that stuff because I know a lot of you guys are doing stuff at home. So what we did is we developed this swiveling uh, billet piece that goes right to the plate that bolts to the block. And uh, so at this point, you can basically just bolt this up and swivel it. And you can obviously flip it up because the patterns are symmetrical. And this allows you to kind of tighten this up and mount one end of the rod end and then plug the other one on. And at that point, you know, all you're trying to do is tack up the other end and this one can be held really uh, pretty tight. So it's really as simple as getting these, you know, just kind of finger tight so you can still move them, but they don't flop around and then bolting it right to the block. Okay, so basically now everything is bolted up. If you look at this thing, um, you just end up pulling this bolt out and putting the heim through. Now you can go forward or backwards with uh, these. And a lot of people ask where we're, where they need to run the other end to. And uh, my, my answer is typically wherever makes sense. So 
you have the ability with a left and right hand threaded um, heim joint, you can adjust things out and in. So uh, I've welded this other end to a K member before, I've welded it right to a frame rail. Uh, anything that's sturdy and structural is a good idea because you're gonna be moving back and forth. So you don't wanna banjo another piece of uh, metal or mount something like a firewall that's gonna be really flimsy. Uh, but a K member or frame rail or a cross member is always a good idea. And like I said, you can go forward or backwards and as you can see, you have the ability, and if you flip this over, you, you know, flip the whole thing over, you can go either direction uh, with this. And generally, you don't need to go any lower than this to mount it. Um, but like I said, if you flip this whole thing over, you can actually get this next range of motion down to here. If you don't want to use our fancy dancy piece, which is only a couple bucks more than uh, the other kits out there that require you to weld both ends, you know, at this point, you're just going to go ahead and get all this marked up and weld it on that end, pull it out, finish weld it, and then come back and do this as well. So after you uh, kind of get a conceptual idea, you can measure this cut to length and then weld your two rod ends, weld that, uh, or go ahead and just tighten the bolts through the window right here. Um, if you don't feel like doing that, you can just take a Sharpie and kind of mark the position, pull it off, tighten the bolts real tight. And like I said, you have a little bit of wiggle room right there, which makes things really easy. So it's really that simple. And uh, I'll, the next question I get are, do I need one or two? And uh, my, question, my answer is typically one is great, two is better. The more strength you can add to that, the less chance you have of it kind of cocking one way or the other, causing issues as far as that goes. So if you can fit two down in here past your headers or exhaust or frame rail, whatever, it's definitely uh, suggested to run two, especially if you're gonna um, have this be a street strip style application where you're driving it around, hitting the brakes and getting both actions a lot. Finally, once you get this all mounted, it's welded on the frame rail or cross member at the end and you have this all welded up, I get a lot of questions about how tight do things need to be. Just go to the point where you can't turn it anymore by hand. And I don't mean like crank on it if you got leverage or big gorilla hands, but it just needs to be neutral, kind of like an anti-roll bar would be. So no more than that is great. Uh, we have these for small block Chevy, big block Chevy, LS, LT, and we have a variety of other platforms coming out. So definitely check them out on our website. Like I said earlier, I'll put them in the description. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email to sales at motionraceworks.com. We'll be happy to answer them as best we can. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We will see you next time.